All right, today we're going to talk about section 4.4, which is on solving by factoring again. Now remember, in section 4.3, our leading coefficient was 1. Today, we're going to have a leading coefficient that other than 1. So if we look at example 1, they're going to ask us to factor if c is greater than 0, which means it's positive. So again, the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to write our parentheses, and we're going to find the factors of 3x squared. So the factors of 3 are 3 and 1, so we're going to have a 3x and an x, because 3x times x is 3x squared. Then the last thing we're going to look at, the last terms, we have factors of 8. So the factors of 8 are either 4 and 2 or 1 and 8. And now in this case, we're going to just have to try some and see if they work. So we're going to try 4 and 2. And we do know that this is the plus sign, which means both the signs are going to be the same. And then we know that they're both going to be negative. So we're going to try this one out. And again, we don't need to try the first and the last because that's how we got those numbers. But we do need to try the O, the outsides, and the insides to see if that gets us to the middle term of negative 10. So the outsides are going to give us negative 12x. The insides are going to give us negative 2x. That gives us negative 14x. And we want to get to negative 10. So that is not the correct one. So we have to try these again. So we're going to try different factors of 8. So let's try putting them in the other spot. Let's try 4 here and 2 here, because now the outsides and the insides will change. The outsides give us negative 6x. The insides give us negative 4x. That gives us negative 10x, which is what we want. So here is our solution. That's what we get if we factor it. So now, example 2. We're going to do the same thing, only C is less than 0, which means that's going to be negative. We're going to do it the same way. We're going to set up our two parentheses. Factors of 6x squared are either 6x and x or 3x and 2x. Uh, let's try 3x and 2x. And then the factors of 15 are either 1 and 15 or 3 and 5. And again, we're just going to Pick some numbers. The more of these problems that, do, that you do, the easier it will be to see what they are. So let's try 5 and 3. We know that they're, that's going to be a negative sign, which means we're going to have one of each. One's got to be positive. One's got to be negative. So let's try negative and positive in that order. So again, we're going to check the outsides and the insides. We don't have to check first and last because we know the first give us 6x squared. We know the last gives us negative 15. So just doing the outsides and the insides. So we're going to get 9x for the outsides and negative 10x for the insides, which gives us negative 1x. That we are supposed to get positive 1x. So what that really means is we just have our signs in the wrong spot. So if this one's going to be positive and this one's going to be negative, which would switch these to a negative 9 and a positive 10, and so that gives us positive x, so here is our answer. So go ahead and pause the video and do questions 1 through 6. When you're ready, go ahead and um, hit play. And here are the answers for questions 1 through 6, if we factor those. And notice number three cannot be factored. There's no possible factors. So we just write that, cannot factor. Example three, now we're looking at fa um, factoring with special patterns. And again, we're looking at the same ones that we did yesterday, with the difference of squares and a perfect square trinomial. So this one is a binomial. This is a perfect square. This is a perfect square. So we're going to have the same thing in our parentheses, only it's 9x and 9x, and 5 and 5, and again, 1 is positive, 1 is negative. The outsides and the insides are going to cancel out, so that's how we get that one. B, these are, again, perfect square, perfect squares, 
I'm going to have to check to see that. So this is 7z. This is 8. They're both plus signs, so that's plus. If we multiply the inside 2 together and double it, it should give us 112z. And 7 times 8 is 56 times 2 is 112, so that is correct. And the same thing here, perfect square, perfect square. So this is going to be 3r, uh, 11, and it is a minus. And that gives us 33, negative 33r times 2 is negative 66. So there's the answer for that. Again, go ahead and pause the video, and then you can answer questions 7 through actually 11 on your notes. Uh, we'll do 7 through 9. And then you can hit play. And there are your answers for 7, 8, and 9. Now if we go to the next page, go ahead and do 10, 11, and 12. And again, you can pause the video while you do those. And here are the answers for 10, 11, and 12. Now as we get into example 4, some of these problems, we're going to have to factor out some monomial first. So the first thing you're always going to want to check is, are there any factors of these polynomials that we can factor out? So if we look at A, I notice right away that I can take a 3 out of these. So essentially, we're doing the distributive property. We're factoring out a 3. And so now, that is a difference of squares. So it's going to be x minus 10 and x plus 10. And so there is the answer for A. For B, if we look at this one, I notice that I can take a 4 out of all of these. Well, that'll give me a 2m squared plus 7m minus 30. And so in this case, now we have to try to factor that trinomial. Well, it's got to be a 2m and an m. And then factors of 30 are either 1 in 30, 2 and 15, 3 and 10. We've got to find the ones that are going to get us to a middle term of 7m. And we know that we're going to have opposite signs, so we're going to have 1 plus and 1 minus. So let's try minus 6 here and a plus 5. If we check the outsides and the insides, the outsides will give us negative 12m. The insides will give us 5m. And we need to get, that gives us negative 7m. We need to get to positive 7m. So I'm going to switch the signs here. So this is going to be a plus and a minus. So now that will give us the positive 12m and the minus 5m. And so here is the answer for that one. And then the letter C, we're going to take out a negative 7 and also a T here. Notice they both have a T in it. We want to factor that out. So that means we're just going to have a T left in this one and a minus, actually a plus 9. And so we just factored out the negative 7T in that one. And in the letter D, we're going to take out a negative 5. And the reason I take out a negative 5 is I always want my leading coefficient to be positive. It just makes life much easier. So we're going to have 5y squared minus 12y plus 7. And again, we got to try to come up with the factors. It's going to be a 5y and a y and a 7 and a 1. All right, so the, if we, we notice here that this is a plus 7, so that means the signs are both going to be the same, and they both have to be negative because the 12 is negative. So if we check the outsides and the insides outside, give us negative 5y. The insides give us negative 7y. That is negative 12y. So here is the answer to that one. So go ahead and pause the video, and then you can do questions 13 through 15. There are your answers for 16, 17, and 18. So, so far, we've been just factoring all of these quadratic equations. 
Now, what we're going to move into in example five is solving quadratic equations. So instead of just factoring these expressions, we're now going to have an equation and we're going to use the zero product property just like we used yesterday as well. And we're going to solve these. We're going to find what does X actually equal. So the first thing we're still going to have to do is we're going to, we're going to factor all of these problems and then we'll go one step further and solve it. So we're going to start by factoring these again. Can't take out any common factors. So let's try a 4x and an x. Factors of 15. Uh, let's go 5 and 3. So minus and plus. Again, we want to check to make sure the outsides give us negative 20x. The insides give us 3x. That is negative 17x. So we're good there. We have picked the right factors. So now we have 4x plus 3 equals 0. Or x minus 5 equals 0. And then we solve this. So this one is 4x equals negative 3, and x equals negative 3 fourths. And here, add 5 to both sides, we have x equals 5. So that is the answer for number 5a. We're going to do the same thing over here on b, but now notice that we have variables and numbers on both sides. We want to put it into standard form. So we always want to set it up so we get everything on one side and set it equal to 0. So if we do that, we're going to get 3y squared. We're going to add 14y to both sides. So that's going to give us plus 36y. We're going to add 48 to both sides. That's going to give us 108. And we're going to have equals 0. So now if we look at this, we can probably take a 3 out of everything. So we're going to get y squared plus 12y plus... 36 equals 0. Now if we look at this, I see right away that this is a perfect square trinomial. So I'm going to go y plus 6 squared equals 0. If you don't see that, that's perfectly fine. You factor it, you get, you get y plus 6 times y plus 6. But in this case, we know that y plus 6 equals 0, which means y is going to equal negative 6. And there is the solution for B. We only have one solution there in that case, and it is negative 6. All right, example 6 says you are designing a garden for the grounds of your high school. You want the garden to be made up of a rectangular flower bed surrounded by a border, uniform width, and covered with decorative stones. So we're going to draw this picture. Uh, uniform width, so we know that this is going to be, we're going to call it x by x, is the width around the outside. Flower bed will be 22 feet by 15 feet. And your budget will allow enough for 120 square feet. Okay, so we know that we're going to have 120 square feet. What should the width of the border be? All right, so after we have the picture, we're going to write our quadratic equation. Well, we know that the length is going to be 22 plus 2x because it's x on one side, x on the other side, so that's plus the 2x. The other side is now going to be 15 plus 2x, and we're going to subtract the area of the whole or of the current rectangular flower bed which is 330 if we take 22 times 15. And that has to equal 120, which is going to be the area of the decorative stone. So the first set of the sets of our parentheses, we multiply that together. That's going to give us the area of the whole thing. We're going to subtract the area of the flower bed, and that will give us the area of the decorative stones. So if we then go ahead and foil it, we're going to get 330 plus 44x plus 30x plus 4x squared equals 450 if we move that over. Now let's put everything on one side. So we're going to get 4x squared plus 74x minus 120 equals 0. So we're going to take 2 out of everything there. So we're going to get 2x squared plus 37x minus 60 
equals zero. And then if we factor it, we're going to get two times two x and an x here. And so that's going to give us two x minus three and an x plus 20. So then when we solve it, we're going to get x equals either three halves or negative 20. Well, obviously, x cannot be negative 20, so x is going to be 3 halves. So it said, what should the width of the uniform border be? And so we are going to say 1 and a half feet, or it would be 18 inches. All right, in example seven, we're going to be looking at solving a multi-step problem. An internet service provider sells high-speed internet for $30 per month to 1,500 customers or consumers. For each dollar increase in price, the number of customers will decrease by 25. How much should the company charge in order to maximize the monthly revenue? And what is that ma maximum monthly revenue? Now, this is exactly like the problem we did the other day. Um, where if we increase the price, we're going to decrease the number of sales. So when we talk about, about this function, we're going to have y equals, and if we start with uh, the number of consumers, it's 1,500, and the ticket price or the sale is $30, and it says that we're going to increase the price. So we increase the price by $1. That means we're going to decrease the number of sales. Now, if we look at this, this function is now in intercept form. So if we find the intercepts, we're going to go 1,500 minus 25x equals 0. So if we solve that, 1,500 equals 25x. And so we're going to get x equals uh, 60. And if we solve the other side, Obviously, we have 30 plus 1x equals 0, so x is going to equal 30, negative 30. So these are the two intercepts. Well, we don't want to graph this, so we're going to find the axis of symmetry. Well, I know that the axis of symmetry is going to be the average of these two. So we're going to go 60 plus negative 30 over 2, which is going to give us 30 over 2, which is 15. Now, if we remember, the 15 represents our x. So that means we're going to increase the price by $15. Okay, so when we look at how much should the company charge in order to maximize monthly revenue, they should charge a total of $45 because we want to increase the price by $15. Then what we're going to do to find the maximum monthly revenue is we're simply going to put that in $45 in for our x values. So if we put 45 in here, we're going to get 1,500 minus 25 times 45, which is going to give us a total of 1,125. And if we put it in the other side, it's going to give us 45. So we multiply those two, and we're going to get a total of 50,625. Okay. And so that is our maximum revenue. So if they charge $45, then they will make a total of $50,625. So go ahead and do questions 19 through 21. You can pause the video, and then once you have those done, go ahead and hit play. All right, so here are the answers for questions 19, 20, and 21. Um, notice, again, we always have to make sure that they are in standard form, and then we factor them. Then we use the zero product property, just like we did in section 4.3, to find what the values of x are to make these our solutions. So here is the assignment for page 263, or for se section 4.4 is on page 263.